Whenever you're ready. Oh, all good to go. Spot on. Um, well, welcome, <laughs> people in person and um, and online. I think we're just getting a couple of seats um, um, set up. But um, but yeah, thank you for um, for for joining us at Core. Um, um, yeah, it's it's going to be a all things strings a night of looking through all the guitars we've got, the ukes, the mandolins, um, and as I said to the the live audience just a moment ago, possibly a banjo if um, people would like to go through that <laughs> experience. And it's not just a chance for uh, for a sales pitch on guitars, not at all. It's to talk about the instruments we'll have, but also um, about the, mu the music lesson side of core, as well as the community-based stuff. And um, and if anybody has any questions as well, I don't know if um, we can see questions from online. If yeah, people yeah. comment. Amazing. So um, yes, for, for the for the uh, for anybody that joins us on the live stream, this is um, being brought to you by uh, Pete from Hexam TV, who's helping us um, with this tonight. So yeah, if there's any questions about core that you have, um, or indeed the instrument that I'm playing, if there's something I've missed out. Um, or something that I play, or um, a guitar that you've seen that you would like me to play, so you can you can hear it. Then um, do um, do just shout aloud. So I'll um, I'll begin with um, a bit of playing then, and um, and a bit of chatting about this uh, this guitar right here. And um, yeah, any questions that arise, please do uh, shout them out. So. Thought I'd get started with this one just as it's a fun, fast one to play. And this is a, um, a second hand instrument we've got in at the moment, which is a vintage VRS 100. Um, quite similar to a, a PRS guitar. It's quite clever of them to call it a VRS, um, being named vintage. And um, uh, it's an instrument for, for rock music mainly, but you can get all sorts of things on it. You get country music out of it, blues music. Um, I'm sure if you wanted to, you could do something folky on here uh, as well. But um, I want to put it uh, to a bit of a, a blues rock track to, to um, start things off. I might do a bit of playing and then come back to some, some facts, if that's all right. You know. Um, please do say as well if you'd prefer it quieter or indeed louder. <laughs> <laughs> what was that in the back? <laughs> Thank 
Demo yeah, I realized I went on a little bit. That was quite indulgent of me, but uh, I was having fun to be honest. Um, but yeah, so that's the um, the VRS 100, as you can hear, like totally ready for, for some rock stuff, and um, and that's what it sort of feels right to feels right to play on it. Um, really nice low action, so the strings really nice and low, um, but big wide frets as well. Apologies about my mask going down. Um, big wide fret so you can get some nice big bends in as well. But super nice for um, a beginner player because of that low action. But equally for somebody that's been playing a little longer, um, you can feel quite at home on it, you know. Um, 
here come a couple of the nerdy facts, um, and then I shall move on to something else. But um, all the hardware on this, um, so all the, the bridge, the pickups, the tuners, everything like that, despite it being like sub 200 quid for a second-hand guitar, all the um, stuff on um, vintage guitars, of which I'll play another in a second, are designed by a guy called Trev Wilkinson. And now Trev Wilkinson used to be a builder for Fender guitars um, back in the day. And um, I can't remember at which point in time, but left at some point. And, um, um, but before he did, there was a, a Jeff Beck signature Stratocaster that came out that, um, that he designed the bridge for. Jeff Beck was wanting um, a guitar that stayed in tune, but this was after sort of the 80s Floyd Rose phase, which are tune, um, bridges that lock so that the strings can't go anywhere. But the problem there is if a string breaks and everything is locked in place, you can't do anything about it. So he wanted something that you could adjust it if a string broke on a gig. So Trev Wilkinson was the guy that um, came up with a solution for that. So he then designs everything that goes on a on a vintage guitar, as you'll hear on this next one in a sec, but just kind of cool that on these sort of, I guess what's called a, or what's classed as a, like a mid low to mid-range instrument, everything that's on it is designed and um, made by the company of somebody who um, worked at Fender and um, invented something for, for Jeff Beck, which is, which is pretty cool, um, to me anyways. <laughs> um, but anyways, I'll switch guitars, um, unless anybody's got a, any questions on this or anything like this. No? Oh, good. I shall move on. Can you turn this oh. way, next one, so we can see the guitar that when you play the next the next time you play? Of course. Exactly. Yeah, right. Nice one. <laughs> Christine asks, who owns Core Music, Dean? Who owns Core Music? Um, oh, I don't know if... It doesn't have an owner. Yeah, it doesn't have an owner. It's a community interest company. So um, it's kind of a, uh, essentially a non-profit um, community. And But any profit that is made, if I'm getting this right, Mike, goes back into community projects and um, things that are going to help the community and not just individuals that, that work here. Um, it's managed by a board of directors, basically. Great. Yeah, board of directors, but not necessarily owned by anybody. Um, and is totally a community enterprise. Mm -hmm. Hope that helps out. All right then, let's switch around. So yeah, this is a different. So we've got a, oh, I know this isn't like official or anything, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say the the T word. So um, I'm going to call this a T style because I'm not sure if um, it, what you meant to say, especially with being live streamed. I don't know if that's a thing. But um, this is a T style guitar or a um, T L E caster, <laughs> um, but made by Vintage once again um, with all the stuff um, by that guy, Trev Wilkinson, and um, um, his sort of improvements on um on on what thought could be improved by fender and it's a 60s style so 50s style it's just going to be easier to say 50 style telecasters um were sort of designed for the music of that day so um uh, for jazz so bebop players a little bit faster but also the emerging rock and roll that was happening and um country guitar players that were um playing these really fast lines and things like that but um, the 60s began and um, um, a lot of bands playing, um, let's say, simpler music or simpler chord patterns and just wanted to sort of jam away. So a 60s Telecaster has a bit of a thicker neck, a rosewood fingerboard, which is arguably going to give you a, a slightly darker sound, but I think that's up to the individual on whether they think it changes the sound. Um, and the look as well was just a little bit different, but um, um, there were some of the factors that made it uh, a 60s Telecaster rather than a, than a 50s because of the, the type of music that was being played and the, the type of players that were, were playing that. Um, with that said, though, um, I'm going to go through a couple of bluesy country 
drum tracks, like maybe more whole at home on a on a um, 50s Telecaster, but but I don't know. I think they just sound quite cool on this one. So um, has anybody got any questions on this or anything else at the moment? So what, what's the difference between the 50s and the 60s in terms of the controls you have? Is it, is it the same? So same, same controls, controls, but the pickups are a little bit hotter. So they've got a bit more output. To um, on the sixties, yeah. yeah. So um, with bands um, in in the later half of the sixties, like the Kinks and um, the Stones, wanting a bit of a grittier sound, um, the pickups were made um, hotter with more output to achieve um, overdriven tones um, uh, with more ease because there's no overdrive pedals yet. Fuzz pedals were coming about, <laughs> but with pickups from the 50s with l lower outputs even if you cranked your amp up really high you still weren't going to get any grit so with a bit more output from your pickups you could just about achieve it if you if you whacked everything up to 10 so um of course <laughs> um but in terms of the actual controls it was still three ways on a telecaster and um one volume and one tone um and i don't know if on stratocasters Five way switches had begun by then. Um, but um, it's the Telecaster anyway, so I don't need to answer that one. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that would be the main thing. Oh, the switch there is selecting um, between using this pickup right there, which I'll do a little demo of. Um, oh, so many buttons. <laughs> Um, so we've got the front pickup just there, um, which hopefully you'll be able to hear the difference. It's a bit of a warmer tone. The second position is going to give you. Um, both pickups at the same time. You can, all, you can even hear there that, um, even though it's clean, that, that overdrive is beginning to happen. And then with the switch towards the back, that's just the uh, the bridge pickup on its own, the one close to the, the bridge there. For a bit more of a twang, still retaining some of that country sound really. You get a lot of famous players using um, Stratocasters, but um, all Gibson Les Pauls as well. But a lot of the times you dig into these sound, these classic sounds on recordings by bands like Led Zeppelin and um, um, and others. I can't think off the top of my head right now. <laughs> but a lot of those sounds, because they played the, the flashier guitars live, like. Les Pauls and Stratocasters, um, the tones in the studio were commonly um, Telecasters. So I think it's that first Led Zeppelin record, which just sounds, just in terms of guitars, really thick. Um, and because he then went to use a, a Les Paul live, um, it's um, often thought that they're big fan Gibson tones, but no, they're, they're these thin, Teletones, I guess. Um, that's that's actually on those records. Um, I shall do a little bit of playing then, um, on this. I might go for a. Um, let's go for a bit of. Thing, I guess. Yeah, this will sort of work. Shall not play for six minutes again. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
sounds you can sort of get out of it and um i didn't do it as much but you can definitely get a few more just by um rolling off a couple of the controls as well so you get something a little more funky i guess like uh well i don't know like a Control, you can get a few more tones out of it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, this vintage V62, it's called. Um, and 
And yes, I might shift on to something else. Um, any thoughts, any questions floating around people's minds? Oh, nice, nice question. Um, this is 379, but remember, <laughs> I sound like a car salesman. Um, it's 10% off everything tonight. <laughs> Whether it's guitars, strings, picks, well, maybe, well, picks would be, that would be, that would be uh, quite a stretcher. <laughs> it's seven pence off there. But um, yeah, um, drum heads, um, ukes, brass and woodwind, books also, anything that you can see um, and buy. Um, but yes, usually this is 379. I got a U in maths at school, so um, I'm not going to tell you what 10% off that is, but I shall grab another guitar. Yeah, on your amplifier, what, what's your set piece? Uh, what, what is it? Oh, so I'm using um, this GT1000, it's called, down the bottom here, um, which is by the company Boss, um, but it's their version of a Line 6 Helix, if you've, you may have come across those. Um, so I'm not using any amplifier per se, it's all being modelled within this and coming out of the uh, the PA. Um, in terms of the actual sound, um, it's something I've um, put together myself based on a, on a Fender Tweed amp. Um, so something <coughs> quite classic and clean, but then adding a few pedals on um, as well. As a general rule though, if I was, what I tried to model in the sound, as if it was something like a Marshall, I was basically putting everything on seven, so if I had any EQ or anything in this, it's as if you just turn on a, any other amp and put in bass, middle and treble up to seven and and just kind of being happy with that and then using the guitar to, to control. But um, but yeah, I'd say the closest to cl what I've got going on there, if it was a real amp, everything on seven and then adjusting the volume to, to match. Um, yeah. Thank you. No worries. Um, try to grab. Um, try an acoustic maybe. Yeah, that could be quite cool. What would you like, Dean? Um, let's go for the. Oh, can I grab the Faith? Actually, that's at the front. The Faith. The front one. Yeah, the Nomad would be amazing, please. We've never worked with each other before. <laughs> And we never will again. <laughs> Joking, please don't fight me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd try out some oops, some acoustic stuff this evening as well. As um, um, I know a lot of people that come into court are acoustic players. There we go. Um, and... Yeah, I just want to play a couple of the fates as well, to be honest, because they're, they're really, really nice and um, seems like a bit of a pun, but they are solid. They are solid in terms of how good they are, but in all the wood is solid as well. So there's no there's no laminates on these or anything. Um, and I know there's a lot of people out there who are firmly in the solid wood camp and definitely not in the, the laminate woods, but sometimes a hybrid of both can be nice. But um, for these, um, they are that little bit, they're more superior just because everything on them is solid wood. The neck, um, um, a top of course, but but the back and sides, which which are then are normally just a element of pieces of wood compressed together. Whereas here, just the, the one solid bit of wood, um, giving us a little bit of a nicer tone overall, and um, probably is an instrument that's gonna gonna last a little bit longer for for someone as well. Um, oh, have I failed here? I, uh, when um, setting up the guitars before, I have. Clarence assistant Mike, I put a battery in um, I've got a the room guitar. All right, oh, it's all right, man. Thank yeah. you. I've got one in one of the, uh, I think it's the 12 string there, or the Ashbury, I think I accidentally okay. um, took this out of. Um, brief intermission, like in. Um, it's the one film I always remember because they put intermission on the DVD as well. It was Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> they put the, 
intermission on the DVD and make you wait on the DVD. I was really confused as a child, like sat there just watching nothing. I could have just skipped ahead for the for the rest of the film. But... I'm going to have to take these guys for no worries at all. So we'll, we'll stay for one more guitar. No problem. That's been great. Don't Thanks get, so much for joining us. Because we're going to leave before you finish. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool. Um, great. Wicked. So, yeah, these are, um, it's a Faith Nomad. And although looking, um, very small, like a, um, a half size or even a three quarter size model. Um, it is a full size adult guitar, but the body is is um, obviously a lot smaller. The neck is full size for adults though. Um, so it's not any shorter than, than, than any other guitar that would be on the wall or any other that I've, I've played um, already. But yeah, that body is a little smaller because people like to travel now and um, and take the guitars with them, or um, doing a bit of busking, like Jim, who's in the audience here, if you get to see him, um, do stick around. Um, not not tonight, but if you're out there and you happen to see him, it's very good. Um, and there's a lot of influential players playing smaller guitars now, um, and I'm just going to go with the guy at the top of the list that um, some people don't hear anymore, but Ed Sheeran definitely has popularised the uh, smaller body acoustic. It appeals to a lot of people, and they've still got a nice big sound, um, especially when it's all solid mahogany like this one. Um, a British brand as well, designed by a guy called Patrick James Egel, whose um, custom guitars go for, for thousands. Um, but he put um, all of his expertise into this brand called Faith as well, which is uh, just a kind of a nice thing for him to do, I guess. He didn't have to, I don't think. Um, Am I right in thinking they're made in Indonesia? Is that right? They are, yeah. Um, so everything on them is is made um, in Indonesia. And um, I used to work in a um, in a different guitar shop, um, but we won't mention them tonight. Um, <laughs> and um, I was speaking to the the rep from Faith Guitars once, and um, and honestly, I was, I've, I've had a faith myself, and the only thing that I ever had a slight problem with was the handle on um, on the, the guitar cases, the hard cases that come with them. Now, just want to clarify that by saying I was using this guitar every day, and it still lasted for three years, but the handle did go, so I had to get a new one. Um, but the faith rep was telling me that in Indonesia, in, um, in the company, um, that they use out there to, to produce them and work with. They've got a guy for, for everything. So um, someone um, is able to make tuners, um, the, the necks, they've got a specialist for everything. And he said the only person that they don't have in Indonesia is a handle specialist. <laughs> and he says that's why the handles always break on these cases because they haven't found the person to uh, make the, the, the greatest handles yet. So. Uh, um, there's definitely a pun in there somewhere. Dean. I'm sure there is. I'm not creative enough. Get on the case. Get on the case. <laughs> You're still the show, man. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I just thought that was, that was quite funny. How um, he was very he was very open about that. <laughs> How's that sounding? Can everybody hear that? Great. I might. But yeah, I'll do a little bit of playing then, and um, um, yeah, see what you think about this one.
don't um, fully agree with this man's morals. You can totally get away with some Clapton style stuff. <laughs> but like all the bends. So that's really nice on, on acoustic where you'd um, um, sort of expect to not be able to do any bends or any uh, more electric style stuff, I guess. Um, and even um, unplugged, um, just to show off the amount of volume it gives. big sound it's making stuff in here vibrate so that means it's loud enough <laughs> but yeah that is a little example of um the faith acoustics now there is another one up there as well but um um it's a slightly bigger body made of the same materials though it's just stained mahogany rather than being uh oh my glamorous assistant mike is going to uh, display that yes there we go <laughs> for those on the live stream you are missing out right now <laughs> um but yeah Solid mahogany on that one as well. Um, same pickup as well, the uh, the Priestess Fishman pickup, um, which is uh, really solid. They've, they've got tuners in, so you don't need to go out and buy yourself a tuner as well. Um, but yeah, the only difference there is it's bigger and the wood is stained. That's why it's um, darker rather than being a, being a different wood. Um, really nice ebony fretboards as, as well. Um, so yeah, that's the faith. Any thoughts, any questions? Um, they come with gig bags. <laughs> that was my extra thought there. It just came to me. It just came to me like a vision. What, what, what's the 
floor device that you're using there. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so this is sort of um, um, a little toy to run in um, tandem with the fisherman pickups, and um, it's called an Aura. And basically, it's a uh, it's a device that you plug the, <coughs> the guitar into. If it's an acoustic, and I don't know how they've done it, but they've taken guitars like the Faith and other brands like Martin and Taylor, and they've recorded them with certain microphones. Now, somehow, don't ask us how, I've got no idea. They've managed to create like snapshots of those that you can select. So when you plug your guitar in, it, try, it recreates those recorded sounds and sort of slaps them on top of whatever you're doing right there. So there's sort of two things happening. There's, there's um, uh, if I take this all the way down, you might be able to hear. This is just the guitar and so on through the pickup. But I'll just um, um, blend that, that snapshot back in, so to speak. You should hear a, a bit of a change. <laughs> It's not to hide or disguise, it's just to bring back some of the, the real guitar that, that pickups can't do yet on acoustic guitars. That's always been a bit of the downfall. So, um, But I think they've done quite a good job. So you can... And, and are, there, are there sounds that you can choose different? That's it. You can yeah. select what's best for your, um, your guitar. So at the moment, I've got something that matches this a little more to, to sort of show the guitar off. Um, better, but for instance, um, there's a 12 string version on there. So, so if I was to grab that, that 12 string, which I might do soon, um, I'll flip it to the 12 strings on <coughs> me section, and um, it'll just um, that recording was made with the 12 string, so yeah. it should enhance it in the right way. Um, once again, I've got no idea how they do that, um, um, but um, but yeah, it seems to sound sound all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the uh, um, the faith stuff. I shall um, shall grab another. Might be cool to uh, to to try the twelve string actually, if that's cool, mate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you so much for coming. So before I play this guitar, I'll talk a little about the uh, um, the lessons and stuff here as well. Just um, to anybody on the live stream, they don't already know. Oh yeah. So. So yeah, as previously mentioned, which I'm sure a lot of people um, 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 viewing right now will, will, um, will already know, um, we've got uh, lessons on um, that uh, run throughout the week at core. So it's battery. I don't remember. And a um, whole manner of instruments from guitar to Drums, piano, keyboard, um, vocals. I think we've got our oh, violin, of course, um, or Tudor Penny. And did I hear on the grapevine about woodwind lessons begin? Yeah, great. So we've got woodwind and brass, or just woodwind? Brass and woodwind, brass and woodwind um, lessons coming as well in the new year. So there's um, loads going on. Um, we've got students and tutors alike currently in the, uh, in the, in the room. Um, and and yeah, it just there's a great community vibe to it, but also it's such a buzz when when there's students um, students playing either whether it's um, the drum lessons that are happening or we can hear the piano come from the other room. There's a, there's just a, a liveliness about the place which is which is amazing. That's probably one of the biggest things um, about about call, not just the shop but but the uh, the tuition side of things as well. So um, definitely. Give us a shout if you're looking for tuition in the new year.
Wicked. So, um, I may not play with the um, track on this one, but um, just wanted to show off a 12 string because I know there may be some who um, haven't seen a 12 string guitar before um, and some that may be familiar with them, um, but may have a few questions about them. The, uh, the first question that is usually asked about 12 strings is um, how to tune them. And the answer is you cannot. Um, that was really bad. <laughs> Um, it's quite true. It is. Yeah, it's less of a joke and more of just a cold, hard truth. As you will now witness. <laughs> no, I just about there. It's the first one I made sure to, to tune today. Um, but I knew it was a hopeless challenge, hopeless task. That's going to be close enough, I think. So um, a bit of info about 12 strings, if, um, if uh, anybody's interested. Um, while there are 12 strings, there um, it's really six courses of strings. Um, so there's there's two strings for, for every note. For instance, I'll switch this. Wicked. So, it's not like we've got 12 different notes going on at the moment. We've got um, the standard six strings of a, a guitar being E, A, D, G, B, and E from um, low in pitch to high in pitch. And we've got these first four strings tuned an octave apart, um, meaning that essentially one is high and one is low, but they are tuned to the same note, an E right there. It's giving us a little bit of a different sound. Um, and that happens on the next string, A, on D, and on G as well. Now, once we get to the high strings, they're already high enough, I guess. So they're just tuned in unison or exactly the same, essentially. We still get this sort of wobbly, chorusy sound to them, which, um, which is quite nice. As a student once said to me, that just sounds wrong. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I wish I hadn't paid all this money for this guitar, um, uh, the trust that I have, because um, apparently it just sounds wrong. So that's not cool. But, um, but I don't think it sounds too wrong. I think it sounds quite nice. Well, I'm just going to on that one, it's a little louder. And you'll have heard it on, um, or may have heard it on songs like. Uh, if I, if I can remember it. Some Pink Floyd and things like that. And I can't quite remember the chords, but there's a song called Horse With No Name by the band America. Do you know the chords, Mike? Oh, that's all good. But that's got a, that's got a 12 string on. And obviously the classic. Yeah. That one as well, bit of Bon Jovi. <laughs> um, it's my parents' influence. Um, also on a 12 string as well. But um, I'm just going to have a bit of a jam um, with with this one rather than a track, just so you can um, just so you can you can hear it a bit. Uh, it's a Hofner, which, to be honest, I didn't really know much about Hofner guitars, and I, I know more about the the basses um, and. Um, the famous violin bass, the, the McCartney bass, I guess. Um, but didn't really know much about their, their guitars, but had a bit of a check out of their history and um, seemed to be quite a prevalent maker of 12 strings uh, sort of back in the day. They, they weren't um, necessarily as, as around as much, but Hoffner seemed to be, have, a, have a few models to, to offer rather than just, oh, they happen to do a 12 string. They, they had... Um, a, a range of 12 strings and even a, a 12 string classical guitar as well um, at the time um, which was um, quite interesting so yeah I'll just have a bit of a jam with it and um, um, yeah if you can drop any questions please do ask what I'll do is give a bit of a high off there 
The sound. Um, I can't believe we've got the, the best 12 string riff of all time. Remember my favourite band? Something like that. <laughs> um, for them being my favourite band, I really don't know how to play that at all. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's the sound of a 12 string. And um, very similar to a mandolin as well, which is um, just behind um, Sheldon Jules' head right there. Um, an eight string instrument. Um, but the reason that's got eight strings rather than, um, than 12, like this 12 string, is because that's similar effect, but it's just got four courses of strings rather than rather than the six. Um, but gives a similar idea that chorusy or as my student put it, wrong sound that you may be looking for. Um, that can be achieved on a, on a mandolin as well. Um, used in, um, in bluegrass a lot of the time, but um, if you ever get to check it out or you find yourself on um, YouTube, classical mandolin is, is pretty mad. Um, I never thought I'd say that sentence, but, uh, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's really quite intriguing to, to watch. So, um, yeah, so classical mandolin stuff is just want to check out. Um, cool. Well, I might go back to playing with a with a with a jam track for for a bit. But if you're up for it, Joe, <laughs> um, we've got this um, court um, Yorktown um, jazz box right here. This uh, this big arched up guitar. Now, um, um, I can hack my way through some jazz, but um, but but Joe is a jazz man, so yeah, I wonder if you if you want to play through a little. Do you want me to do it now, or do you want to, you... should we, should we go for that, and then so I'll maybe chat about you, it a little? Up to you, Dean. Yeah. Let's go for it. Okay. I think that'll be really cool, man. Thank you so much. Um, let me set the track up. He's never. I've not even told you what the track is. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> fly me to the moon in A minor. Can I play without a track? Is that you can? Is that you totally can. Uh, 
That's a good show. That. That'll be pretty evil of me. <laughs> I said it would be pretty evil. It was pretty evil of me because I have it all planned. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll set that. Oh, okay, um, right. I'll just... There. there you go. It's just that reading. So, in an almost comical manner. Is it to talk, Joy? You don't. I shall talk. <laughs> no, Joy is a far superior jazz man to me. Um, um, and um, thought, yeah, if anybody, since he's here, would be able to demonstrate this um, so much better. Um, oh, just oh, it's the other lead there, dude. Sorry. Oops, sorry. Apologies. Um, but yeah, thought this would just be a far better demonstration of the, the jazz box than, than if I did. Um, I'll talk a little more about it though after you've um, heard a little bit of Joe, because um, well, that's that's what I want to do. So. Jazzy 12 bar blues, I was going to attempt. <laughs> that was mad. Joe has to make it see for less than you think. Yeah, that's what I was about to mention. So, yes, um, for anybody watching online there, Joe is one of the, uh, the tutors here of all styles, I should say, but um, of, of course you can play all styles. I'm playing that. You can play that, you can play anything. Um, um, so, yeah. Thank you for that, Joe. That was um, that was a far better demonstration. Um, fortunately, this one isn't for seven, though, because Joe just sold it to me. 
with that performance. <laughs> um, but um, but no, it's a um, what a wicked wicked player, and um, and yeah, playing on this court, um, um, what we what is really called an an arch top. Uh, actually, no, this is. A, so, yeah, technically is because you can get most guitars are flat tops, and I think this is just quite a flat arch top. Um, but effectively, yeah, flat top is a um, is as the the acoustic guitars um, um, you've seen me play a little bit, and um, where the piece of wood is flat, but this does have a little bit of an arch in it. But I was just looking there because um, it's not the the uh, most pronounced arch top I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, I was um, doing a bit of research on this one when it, as and when it came into the shop as well. So I'd never, I'd never seen a court York town before. Seen many guitars like it, but hadn't seen this particular guitar. And started having a little search around, and I guess it was their sort of uh, um, their their idea or their take on a Gibson um, ES one seven five. Originally, that was their sort of. Um, idea um, and just putting a little bit of a better spec above um, companies like Epiphone um, who are tied to Gibson but they wanted to just beat them a little bit and um, to try and bring people over to court um, so they just put some um, nice tuners on effectively um, a really nice tailpiece down the back but also some um, some lovely um, pickups that they created for for the Yorktown models because uh, Court, um, I guess, I think most famously known for um, the the signature Gene Simmons bass guitar out of Kiss, which is obviously a very different vibe to this. But um, um, so they definitely did their their work and their, their homework before putting this this together. So um, um, so yeah, see that's what I would have played. <laughs> How do I end? It's not as jazz as I would have got, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the um, the court York town, and um, um, comes with the case as well. This particular guitar, um, and even though we've had a lot of jazz on this, um, I'm sure I could be the one to present that it does do a little bit of rock as well. If there are any Guns and Roses fans, um, um, the rhythm guitar player Izzy Stradlin used a. a ES-175, um, which, as I said, like this one was modeled on. You can get still some meaty tones out of it, you know, you don't have to... Uh, um, stick to the jazz if you don't want to. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of a, um, a meet in the middle point to the electrics and the, the acoustics. So, oh yeah. How does it sound without any amplification? Does it, does it have any volume to it? Uh, yeah, yeah. So it would have something like... Think of it as a bit of a sofa guitar. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty nice. Though. So got a bit of a nice ring to it as well. Um, and um, uh, and records are quite nice as well. Did do a little bit of trying out with that. So if I just put a mic to it, rather than um, being amplified through the pickups, if you were to go a little more traditional, I haven't actually tried this, but let's just see if we get a little bit of sound, hopefully. Let's see what we get. Are we getting much there? Is that a good demonstration? Thank <laughs> you. 
works quite nice for um, small amps as well. Records like sort of pop jazz records like um, Come Away With Me by Nora Jones comes to mind or play this guitar just because of the, uh, um, the sounds that come out of it. It's, uh, it's um, I don't know, it's got this chilled aura about it, I think. Um, so yeah, that is uh, that is the Yorktown. Um, so how many guitars is that now? That's about one, two, three, four, five, I think. Um, it's a lot of guitars. I shall um, just start doing a couple of ukes, but then um, there's more of an opportunity to just just chat and um, pick something up and play it um, um, via the Santa's station, and um, and see see what you you guys think think about them as well. Um, any questions online, Peter? Oh, we're all good. No worries. So I'll just grab a couple of ukes as um, I know I've got some uke fans out there. Me included. And I'll we'll just grab a couple of these. Um, shall I'll jump back up? Grab your stuff if you want, oh, thank you, man. <coughs> In my excitement, I've forgotten to mention a um, couple of the specifics on things that I was um, I was going to mention, but um, I feel if anybody's interested in any of more of the specifics about the woods. There's a couple of uh, um, nerdy things about some of the woods on some of the guitars out there at the moment that um because they're not made of just normal wood. Um, some of the fretboards and stuff. So if anybody wants to nerd out about that, they certainly come with me. Um, cool. So this is going to be a little more of an unplugged thing, but um, we've got some lush ukuleles in at the moment by um, uh, the brand Color. But also, confusingly, the brand, and I'm sure it's not pronounced like this. Mike, you'll have to remind me of how it's really pronounced. Larker. Larker. Well, I was going to say Larker. Um, <laughs> but um, it's not, it, can't, it cannot be that. So Larker. But does that mean this is Carla or not yeah. Color? Yeah, Carla. Oh, all right. Carla and Larker, as opposed to Carla and Larker. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but... Whatever they call this on lush. <laughs> um, so I shall attempt this. Should hopefully get a little bit of volume out of the uh, the UK. Maybe. A bit of something. Um, and. Um, this one's sort of at the top end of um, what we've got at the moment in terms of ukes. This is around oh, 130, and um, but I think it definitely sounds that way. We've got a got a range. We've got a lovely bright orange one up there, which I'm a fan of, and the the blue, um, um, which are perfect for beginners, but um, but also just if you want something else, just sort of to to mess around on if you're a, a serious player of a different instrument or something, and you just want someone to have fun on they are wicked um but also something like the caller um, tenor you just there um can really add something to a to a track if you if you um if you make records if you put songs together um i found that the the, the, the tenor can just be sometimes that thing that that it's missing and i know that sounds mad um but i've had songs before i've thought this this needs a this needs something there a little line but another guitar isn't going to work it's going to cloud up the frequencies in the mix but then for some reason that that tenor just seems to work for for a line here or there um but this isn't a tenor this is um a constant size color so so yeah um had all my guitar stuff prepped oh, i know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go for a lovely little version of um you are my sunshine. <laughs>
such a lovely tone um, on the uh, callers. I keep thinking it's going to be a locker. I'm trying very hard there. Um, um, but yeah, and really easy necks. So if anybody's a, a tutor of uke as well and spends long days teaching uke, um, 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 from, from experience, I've got a, um, a uke that doesn't have the, uh, the the nicest neck. If you're um, if you're playing all day with your hand a little bit more cramped than you would on a guitar because of the smaller frets, of course. Um, so I do think it's nice to have um, a pretty solid neck on on a uke. Um, I'll switch over nice and quick to that uh, a tenor that I spoke about briefly. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. Hello. Oh, apologies. I got you the wrong one. No, no, no. How silly of me. Sorry. Please don't apologize, Mike. I apologize. I'll just assume there's like an hour less on the uh, <laughs> on the paycheck this month. <laughs> <laughs> Baritone is what I meant to say before. Apologies, I was saying tenor, um, but I meant baritone. Um, yeah, can definitely add that um, that something in between. Um, now I'm sure it'll sound nice, but I'm not playing the same thing twice. But I assume it does sound pretty cool. Um, but I shall go with something a little different. Um, um, just to show the sound of it, I'll put the mic back on. Um, and maybe that's really what um, um, what I'm thinking about when, when I mention all this stuff about recording, or even just within a, in a band context. Um, it's that extra little something. It's 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 a warm sound, but it's not too it's not too big, you know. It's just sort of sort of sits sits right. Um, so yeah, that's a nice little show off of of the callers there because of um, because of both them being being on that brand. Um, so yeah, have we got any? Any questions about the the ukes in general? Um, it could be um, something that I haven't mentioned about these, or or even um, anything up there, which can't be seen by the the, the home viewers. But um, or something that we haven't got, and you're thinking, oh, you're missing that, and um, you feel we should know. <laughs> All good if not though. Um, 
Well, what I might do, since we're hitting about half seven, I might do one quick little jam again, um, maybe with one final guitar. I probably just won't talk as much. And then um, we'll go for a couple of... Um, I'll talk a little bit about the the community aspect of this, something that's coming up um, next Thursday here as well. And then have a little opportunity until about eight o'clock for you guys to, to try stuff, just chat and, and see see what's going down. So um, what should I grab? Cool. Oh, there's a, there's a Telecaster I haven't played yet. I might go for that. I'll just pop the... Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Um, yes, let's go for this. Um, cool. So I call uh, let's go for something funny, sort of. Um, cool. I didn't use this one before, did I? It was the other one. No, it was the, the cool. one. Cool. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> um, so, as the final sort of thing, um, got this SX Telecaster, which is a little more like a um, a bit of a hybrid, really, between those 50s and 60s guitars I was talking about before, because the, uh, the neck is a little bit slimmer. It's got a maple fretboard rather than a, than a rosewood that's featured on the, the vintage there. But it's still got some of the the 60s fashion on it, I guess. So um, there's stuff called binding here on the sides, um, which I guess can always be um, um, subjective as to whether that affects the sound of the guitar. But in my opinion, it's, it's very much an aesthetic thing. So that's a bit of the 60s style creeping through. And then, to be honest, it's got some more modern ideas. On a Telecaster, usually, it's just a big, solid piece of wood and um, um, it's designed to be quite plain and simple, a bit of a, a, a workhorse, you could say. But with this, it's a little bit more ergonomic, bringing in some, some new sort of ideas rather than being classic. And um, um, yeah, just got a little bit of a, um, a I wouldn't say bevel, maybe, I'm not sure. Scoop, I like that one. Just taken out of the back, just so it um, sits a bit nicer when you play. And um, although it doesn't necessarily affect um, you when you're playing, there's, um, and this is pretty nerdy, but there's only three screws in this plate rather than four because of um, sort of an improved way of attaching the neck on. But, uh, um, but that's more about the stability of the guitar and probably how long it'll, um, it may last. Um, yeah. I forgot to mention on that um, that vintage show as well that um, it's got a really nice older body um, as opposed to uh, um, a couple of the guitars that have got a, a bass wood, which is really nice, but that one does stand out to us a, a little bit because the older body. Cool. I put a couple of new strings on this before when I snapped them. So we'll see how the tune holds up. <laughs> and once again, the same pickups as the other time. Feel free to laugh. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Um, in a moment, um, then please fire away. I might even put some tunes on just as we chat and stuff. But uh, thank you so much for coming down and um, um, joining me on a Friday night as it approaches Christmas and gets colder. So, so thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, before I forget as well, um, and he said this time next week, not this time next week. But next Thursday, 7 till 9, we've got the Christmas Choral. Um, there's going to be some performances on, um, some carols happening, um, just some good times. Mince pies, mulled wine, sweets, loads happening, music, a lot. So, um, yes, 7 till 9 next Thursday um, is going to be a good one. So, yes, we will hopefully see you all there. Not the Royal Week. Me, Mike, and the rest of the team. (laughs) 